Welcome to Physics Can Be Fun with me, Stephen Thomas. Today I'd like to talk about motors and generators. Now behind me you might notice here we have a car's alternator, which is an alternating current generator. And here we have an exercise bike that has been modified so that when you pedal it, here's the pedals, it will turn this alternator via this wheel. So when we turn this wheel, it turns the alternator, and by pedaling we turn this wheel and turn the alternator. So I'm going to hop onto the bicycle in a moment, and then I'm going to pedal this. Now just to show you how simple this arrangement really is, there's two leads, one to the negative side of the battery, one to the positive side of the battery. The two leads come together, here is the side to the earth, the negative side of the battery, it's simply earth to the body of the alternator. And then there's a lead here which attaches to B positive or the positive side of the battery. So there's the earth or negative, there's the positive. Now, the only other interesting thing is here is a third wire. This comes via the ignition of the car. It's got a small, about a hundred ohm resistor. And we have to attach this to the positive, and the moment we do, this will now function correctly. It's sending a current, a small current, through the rotor, and that's creating a magnet. And when we now turn the rotor, there's three stator windings, and we're going to generate a current in those three stator windings, and that is going to then charge our battery. So let's get onto the bike and start pedaling. Our voltage has dropped down to 12.46 volts. Let's pedal. So this is now attached and it suddenly gets very hard and we know that when it's hard that means that it is generating a current and as we charge up the battery it is now reading 13.8, 13.9, and the voltage is varying all the time. But as we charge up the battery, it now gets easier, 13.84, 13.85, 13.86, And we are, in fact, powering those lights and charging our battery. Now, here is a slightly closer view of the voltmeter. We're about to attach this little wire that, go, that comes from the ignition with a little resistor to the positive terminal. That now energizes our rotor. And let's start pedaling and watch what happens to the voltage. Nothing happens at first. It's very easy to pedal. Now watch what happens when it suddenly kicks in. Still nothing happening. Now watch. Now it suddenly got hard. We can feel that it's charging the battery and I'm struggling to pedal. Watch the voltage. Now I'm going to pedal quite fast. And watch how the voltage has risen, 13.93. So now we are generating, and it's fairly easy to pedal, and our voltage is well over 13. So now this alternator is operating in its comfort zone where it's spinning at a reasonable pace. So here you see the wheel spinning, turning the little pulley wheel of the alternator, generating a current, charging the battery, which you see on the voltmeter. Let's continue our discussion of how to generate an electric current by showing you the simplest way to generate an electric current. So what do we have here? We have a coil, we have attached to probes, 
of our multimeter. The multimeter is set on microamps. And here we have a magnet. And if you bring a magnet close to a coil, we got up to, to one microamp there. We generate a small, very small, electric current. That is the basic principle of how to generate an electric current. Magnet coil, move the magnet into and out of the coil, create a varying magnetic field that is cutting this wire, and we generate a current. Not a very workable current, but a small current nevertheless. And carrying on with our theme of how to generate electric currents, here is a small little fan that has got a coil of wire and a fixed magnet inside that coil. And if we blow on this little fan, it, you can see how the color changes and it generates enough current to light up an LED. The same principle is seen here. Here we have a small torch. It's got a little magnet that turns inside a coil. And if we can get that magnet to, to turn inside the coil, we generate an electric current. And this is again a fairly useful, these last two things we can say are useful amounts of energy. Let's talk then for a moment about the theory behind how to generate an electric current. We've seen in all cases we have to put in mechanical energy. Mechanical energy. Mechanical energy. We have to put in something that's moving. So in goes mechanical energy. And out comes, well, light, but actually electricity from the light. So, electricity, which then makes light. So, in each case, out comes an electric current. And we saw that with our voltmeter as well. So, here is basically the simplest way to generate a current. You get a magnet. Let's say that's a south magnet. There is a north magnet. We have an electric field that goes from north to south. So there's our electric field going from north to south. And inside that we have a rotating coil. So here's our coil. And our coil is rotating. So let's give it some mechanical energy. Let's get it to turn in a clockwise direction. So this coil is turning inside a magnetic field. That means that it is first going to cut the south pole, then it's going to cut the north pole, and in general it's cutting these flux lines or magnetic field lines. So there's a changing electric current. And as it turns, we have... Fleming's right-hand generator rule, and we can work out the direction that the current will go. So there's a Fleming's left-hand motor rule, and there's a Fleming's right-hand generator rule. And what we do is we point our finger in this forefinger in the direction of the field from north to south. We put our thumb in the direction of the thrust, which is in this case up, and here's our current coming out of the board and so our conventional current is coming out of the board which we represent with a little circle and a dot and if we were to do the same thing here we've again got our forefinger the field our thrust is down so the current is going into the board so there we go current in thumb thrust down Current's going into the board like that, coming out of the board, and we would represent it with a circle and a the what looks like the back end of an arrow, the feathered end of an arrow. So here's how our current is flowing. 
Then all we need are some brushes. These could be our slip rings. Normally, if we were to draw them, we would have our two slip rings, one here, one there. Brush, brush, and we can now take the current that is coming in and out. We can take our current that's going in and out via these brushes. There's our brushes, and here would be our slip rings. If I were to draw them slightly better, our slip rings would look as follows. We would put a slip ring here. This would come through, and then we'd have another slip ring here, and then our brushes would rub on the slip rings. So this would come through here. And this would come alternating current. So if we've got slip rings, and this just keeps turning, so we have generated the simplest kind of current with the simplest kind of rings, and we are getting alternating current out. Now, if we want to generate direct current, we use one split ring. I've tried to draw it as big as possible. We have still our magnetic field, a north to south. We still have our coil or armature. And here we have one split ring. Notice there's a gap between the two halves of it. Here we have two slip rings, two slip rings, one split ring, and in this case we're going to get direct current out. In this case we're going to get alternating current out. And if we want to look at what the voltage against time graph would look like, let's draw it here. We're going to get a sine wave. So this is alternating current, and here is our sine wave. Here is time, here is voltage. It's at times in the positive, it's the times in the negative, means sometimes going right, sometimes going left. Whereas if we were to draw our voltage against time, and voltage, it's always positive, and that's what our direct current would look like. It does vary, but it does not vary in direction. It varies in magnitude. It goes to a maximum peak, then to zero. There's zero. There's a maximum. Let's say we were generating six volts. Here would be our six volts. Here would be zero. And then it goes minus, meaning the current goes or voltage is in an opposite direction. So here's our direct current uh, generator. Here's our alternating current generator. And if you want an easy way to remember it, well then maybe we should sing a little song. And that is, My split ring makes me behave like a DC wave, like a DC wave. My slip rings make me behave like a sine wave, like a sine wave. My split ring makes me behave like a DC wave, like a DC wave. My slip rings make me behave like a sine wave, like a sine wave.